Hey guys, in this new video, we're going to take a look at what are the different ways to create a buffer. Alright, we know what a buffer is. A buffer is made up of a weak acid and conjugate base. Or a conjugate acid and a weak base. So that's what a buffer is. But there are three ways to make a buffer. And it's going to be important that you guys recognize these three ways. Now, we're going to say the first way is obvious. A buffer is made up of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So one way to make a buffer is just mixing those two things together. So we're going to say mixing a weak acid and its conjugate base. So for example, what we need to realize here is that we're going to say in this case, um, a good buffer, an ideal buffer. So ideal buffer means that this is the best type of buffer. An ideal buffer is when our weak acid equals our conjugate base. They're the same amount. So let's say we have 0.1 molar HF and 0.1 molar NAF. And we should realize that the numbers could be different for them, but they work best when they're the same. We're going to say this has to do with our buffer range. And what you should realize here, a good buffer has to fall within the range of 10 to 1 or 1 to 10. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean this. So 10 to 1, that means our weak acid at most could only be 10 times more than my conjugate base. If it falls without that, outside that range, it'll be a bad buffer. Okay, so a good buffer is between 10 to a 10 to 1 ratio or 1 to 10 ratio. In the 1 to 10, now the weak acid is 1 and the conjugate base is 10 times that. Okay, so again, this is the buffer range. A good buffer falls within this range. If it falls outside that range, it'll still be a buffer. It'll just be a very bad buffer. And remember, an ideal buffer is the best buffer. That's when both are the same. Now, connected to this also is another topic, which is called our buffer capacity. Now we're going to say buffer capacity, all it means is um, the more concentrated my weak acid and conjugate base, the better my buffer. And this makes sense because remember, what is a buffer doing? It's trying to neutralize the strong acid and the strong base that you add to them. And they can't do their job effectively if there's a little bit of them. So to fight such strong acids and strong bases, you need a lot of weak acid and a lot of conjugate base. The more the better. The more they can better defend themselves. So here we're going to say this is good because they're both the same number. But this is better because it's more concentrated. So this has a better buffer capacity. Oops. So buffer capacity, the more concentrated, the better. Now, if we go back to this ideal buffer, we're going to say that's when they both equal each other. We're going to say that this is found at our half equivalence point. When we reach the half equivalence point, that's when we have an ideal buffer. We'll talk more in detail on that when we get to titration graphs. When we get to the titration graphs of buffers, We'll take a close look and see what do I mean by the half equivalence point and why is this an ideal buffer. So just for right now, write a little note on that. An ideal buffer is when they're both equal. This happens at the half equivalence point. So remember the difference between buffer capacity and buffer range. Uh, the best buffer is when they're both equal in amount. The buffer range says they could be a 10 to 1 ratio. Once it's outside that 10 to 1 ratio, the buffer is still a buffer, but it's going to be a bad buffer. It'll get destroyed very quickly by the strong acid or base that we add. 